Welcome to part three of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating sushi in Blender. If you haven't seen the previous parts, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. And if you'd like to purchase the project files of this tutorial, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the Blender market. The links will be in the description. Now one more thing before we start with this part, I want to let you know about my recently released course, my sci-fi construction robot. So that is an 11 part tutorial series and I show you step by step in real time how to create this sci-fi construction robot. So if you'd like to check out the course, you can check out the course trailer video with the link in the description, and you can find the links to the course on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page in the Blender Market and a few other online marketplaces. The links are all in the description. All right, so what I first want to do is click on this check mark here to hide the sushi that we created in the previous part. So I'm now going to right click to add a new collection. Let's click on new collection, and I can double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename this to the Tamago Sushi. So now what I want to do is I actually want to unhide the nigiri sushi and we created this in the first part of the tutorial series and I'm going to be copying this rice piece because this rice piece is very similar. So I'll press shift D to duplicate and then just right click so it stays where it is and I'm now going to hit the M key to move it to a different collection and I'm going to choose the tamago sushi. So we can now hide the nigiri because we don't need that anymore and we just have this one. So let's go into edit mode and what I want to do is actually hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there and I want to scale it down a little bit because this piece we're going to have a piece of seaweed which is going around it and it's kind of holding the egg piece on the top. I'm also going to press control B to add a bevel and just bring that out just so that it's a little bit bigger. So now you can see it's kind of like a little bit of a bony shape so it comes in and then comes out on the edges. So I now want to model that piece of egg which is on the top of this sushi. So I'll press shift C to center the 3D cursor and then I'll press shift A, let's go to mesh and I'm going to add a cube. Let's scale the cube way down because it's way too big. I'll press the period on the numpad to zoom into the cube, scale it way down and then just bring it up on the Z axis. And then I'll press control A and just apply the scale so when we add the material, the material will be the correct size. So let's go into edit mode and I want to scale this down on the Z axis and then I want to bring it over here to one side and I want to add a mirror modifier so that it's mirrored over to the other side. So on the modifiers panel, let's click on add modifier and I can search for a mirror. We'll add the mirror modifier and mirror it over on the X. And then what I want to do is click here to go to the face select and I want to select this face and let's press X and we're going to delete faces because we're going to merge this with the other part on the mirror. And let's also check mark the clipping button and that way when we bring this into the mirror it'll be merged. So I'll press the A key to select the mesh and let's bring it in on the X axis and now you can see it is merged together. So I can bring this out and then scale it up and we're just going to bring it up like that. And you can see when I zoom in far enough it starts to clip the 3D model and that's because we've zoomed in so much and we're modeling a very small object because it's a piece of sushi. So I'm going to hit the 5 on the numpad to go into orthographic view. I can scale this up a bit more and just kind of shape it. Let's also bring it down in object mode, just like that. And we're now going to shape it to the rice. So I'll go into edit mode and I'll press control R to add a loop cut. And I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel so that there are three. And then I can left click and right click so they stay where they are. Let's press one on the numpad to go to front view. I can hold down the Z button and go to wireframe. And let's click right here to go to the vertex select. I'll click and drag to box select that part and they'll bring it down. And then I can box select these parts and bring them up and maybe rotate them. And then box select this piece and kind of rotate it. And box select this piece and kind of rotate that and move it down. So it's kind of curving over. Also, I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut here. Click and drag and place the loop cut there and kind of move it away a little bit so that it's a little bit smooth there. Maybe bring that back a little bit and that back a little bit. So we're just kind of getting that shape there where it kind of rotates over. All right, so let's go back to object mode. And then I want to give this a subsurface modifier to smooth it out. So I'll press control two to add a subsurf modifier. And on the levels and viewport, I'm going to turn these up to three. So it's pretty high detail. Let's use the object context menu and shade it smooth. So now what I want to do is I want to add some loop cuts on the edges because you can see it's quite smooth on the edges. So let's go into edit mode and I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. I can left click drag up here almost to the top and just left click about there. Then control R to add another loop cut. Let's put another one like right down there. And then I'll press control R to add another loop cut and let's drag this loop cut there. And then I want to add two more on the edges. So control R, just add a loop cut there and control R, add another one there. So why we're doing this is to sharpen up all those edges because we added the subdivision surface modifier. All right, press control S to save this again. And now let's add a procedural material to this object. I might just scale it up a little bit so it's a little bit wider. All right, so let's select the object and we can click over here to go to the shading workspace 
And let's click on new to add a new material. And I'll rename this to the Tamago. So the same name as the type of sushi. So to make this material, I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop it up here and I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. Also with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm gonna press control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And to make sure that the texture is placed evenly on the object, let's use the object coordinates. So I'll put the object into the vector. And then let's change some of the Voronoi texture settings. So I'm gonna turn the scale to like a 55 so we can see more of it. And then let's leave the other settings how they are for now. Although I do want to smooth out the Voronoi, so we're going to click on the F1 here, and we're going to change it to Smooth F1 instead. So I'm creating this Voronoi texture because I want to add some little dots, which are going to look like little holes going into that egg part. But I want to distort them so that they look kind of random shaped. So I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for a Noise Texture, and we'll put the Noise Texture in between the mapping and the Voronoi. So because the Noise Texture is going between the vector, the mapping in the Voronoi here, you can see it's going through the vector, it is distorting the placement of the Voronoi. So you can now see it looks kind of random and noisy. Let's change some of the settings of the noise texture. So I'm gonna turn the scale to like a 15, and then I'll turn the detail to a nine. I don't wanna make it super detailed, I just wanna make it a bit detailed, so I'll turn it to a nine, and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So now you can see we have this cool little texture here, and the black areas are gonna look like they're going into the mesh. So now we can add this into the bump. So let's take the distance, we can drag it out here and then let go. And then we can search for the bump height to convert it to bump data. Let's drop that here. And then the normal can go into the normal of the shader and I can control shift and select the shader to preview it. So now you can see it looks really bumpy. Now that is a bit too bumpy. I don't want it to be quite that bumpy. So I'll turn the bump strength to just like 8.8. .8. Now, I don't want it to be bumpy all over the place, I just want there to be some little holes here and there. So to fix this, I'll go to the Add menu, and we can search for a color ramp. And let's put the color ramp between the Voronoi and the bump, so stick it there. Now, if I drag this white part over, you can see that it's going to be more contrasty, and so more of the texture is just going to be a plain white color. So I'm going to drag the white tab to about here, and now you can see there's just some little holes here and there, and so that kind of looks like that cool egg texture. Now, I also want to add this into the base color, so let's put the distance into the base color, but then I want to be able to control those colors better. So I'll go to the Add menu, and we're going to search for the Mix color. So we'll drop the mix color in between the Voronoi and the principled shader. Now the Voronoi distance, that can go into the factor to determine what parts are color A and what parts are color B. So now I can make the two different colors and they're going to be kind of like some yellowish colors. So for A, I'm going to make this kind of like a bright yellow. And then for color B, I'm going to make this more of like an orangey color. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, for color A, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in EE. A, D, zero, zero. And then for color B, if you go to the hex value, you can punch in D5, eight, eight, zero, zero. Now, as well as that, I wanna add some detailed bump over the entire material, and we're gonna put that into the normal. So I'll go to the add menu, and we're gonna search for another noise texture. And let's stick this right here under the Voronoi, and I can control shift and select it to preview it. And then also let's use the object coordinates. So we're gonna take the mapping vector, we're gonna put that into the vector, the noise texture. So let's change the settings, so on the scale, I want to make this pretty big. So I'm going to make it 175. You can see it's actually not that big because the objects are so small. But let's make the detail 15 so it's very detailed. And the roughness, I'll turn this to like a 0.75. So just a 0.75. So this is a pretty detailed noise texture, so I want to put it into the bump to give it some surface bump. So what I'm going to do is select this bump node, and I'll duplicate it, I'll stick it down here, and the noise texture factor can go into the height value, so put the factor into the height, and then we can take this normal here and we can put that into the normal of the bump. So this way we're mixing multiple bump maps together. So if I control shift and select this bump, you can see what it's doing. And that's a bit too strong. So let's turn it down to like a 0.3 so it's less strong. And then if I control shift and select this bump, you can see now we have two bump maps mixed together. So I can control shift and select the principled shader just to kind of see how that's looking. And then one more thing that I want to do is I want to add another noise texture into the displacement to actually make the mesh a little bit more random. So I'm going to select this noise texture and I'll press control Control shift D to duplicate the node but keep the wires plugged up and let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So on this scale I'm going to turn it up to like a 200 so it's even smaller and the detail I'm actually going to turn this down to just like a 2 so this way it's going to be a little bit more lumpy and then this roughness I'll turn this down to just like a 0.5. 
So now this noise texture can go into the displacement. So what I'll do is pull out a wire from the factor and I'll let go here and I can search for the displacement height. We'll drop that there and that way it'll convert it to bump data or displacement data. And then the displacement can go into the displacement of the material output. And I can control shift and select the shader. So you can see it looks really bumpy, but it's not actually making it pop out. And that's because we need to open up the side panel and we need to go down here. So scroll down to the settings displacement and we want to change the displacement type to displacement and bump. So now it is displacing the mesh and it looks really jagged and that's because the displacement is way too strong. So I'm going to turn the scale down to a 0 0.002 so that it's much less strong. So if now if we zoom in here, kind of look on the edges, you can see it definitely is lumpy, but it's just a bit more subtle. Now I also want to make this material look a bit more shiny. So on the roughness here, let's just turn this to like a 0.3. And then to make it look a bit more like food and make it look a bit more soft, I'm going to drag this up here and then we're going to open up the subsurface scattering. And on the subsurface scattering, I think turning this up to like a 0.7 looks pretty good. So you can see now everything looks a bit more soft and a bit more fleshy and it looks more like food. And then on the radius here, I found that like a 0.2 looks pretty good. So I'll turn all of the radius values to a 0.2 and now that looks quite a bit more like food and it looks more soft. All right, let's go back here to the layout. I'll press Control S to save. So that is looking pretty good. So I now wanna add the seaweed, which is kind of wrapping around. So let's go back to solid view and I'll go to the add menu and we're gonna to go to mesh and just add a plane and let's scale the plane way down and kind of bring it up and then I'll press control A and we'll apply the scale. And then I wanna go into edit mode and we're gonna bring the plane over. We'll just bring it over on the Y axis like that so that we can add a mirror so it mirrors over to the other side. So let's click and add modifier. We're gonna add the mirror modifier. And for this one, we wanna choose the Y axis. So it's going back and forth. Let's also turn on the clipping button. So if I hit G to grab and bring it over on the Y axis, you can see it now merges with the mirror. So now let's shape this to the shape of the seaweed. So I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Let's also press Control R to add a loop cut and I'll scroll out so there are two and I can left click and right click and I'll bring these down a little bit on the Z axis. Maybe scale the whole thing down and bring it down just a little bit. Let's hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices there and I'll bring it back a bit. We can press the three on the numpad to go to side view and I can hit E to extrude and E to extrude again. We're just gonna extrude the vertices down let me go into the orthographic view so you can see that again. You can see right here, it's actually going through the face. So what I need to do is hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices there and kind of bring it forward a little bit so that they're not overlapping. Bring that out as well. All right, hold down the Alt key, select that loop there. Let's bring it out a little bit more and then I can extrude that down there, bring it out a little bit, extrude that again, and maybe bring it up a bit and then extrude it again. We can bring it back a little bit and extrude it again and bring that down. All right, and then extrude it all the way in. And I don't want it to be overlapping, so we'll Alt select those loops there and bring that down a little bit. And then later on when we add the subdivision surface modifier, I'm gonna want the edges to be sharper. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. I can left click and drag it pretty close to the end. Click there. Control R, drag over and place that there. All right, so let's go back to object mode and using the object context menu, I can shade it smooth. And then I wanna add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. So let's click on add modifier and I can search for the subdivision surface modifier to kind of smooth that out. And so now you can see because it's smoothing it out, I need to add a few more loop cuts. So let's go into edit mode and I can press Control R to add a loop cut, drag this out there. Also, I need to hold down the Shift and Alt key and select some of these loops and bring them out a little bit. Just because I don't want them to be going through the rice object. So we'll bring that out a bit farther. And then I also wanna make it a little bit thick. So we can add the solidify modifier. Let's go to add modifier. We'll search for solidify, just add the solidify modifier. And it's way too thick right now. So we need to drag this thickness value really, really small. And I'm gonna go with a thickness value of 0 0.0005 so that it is pretty thin. And also right here on the subdivision surface modifier, let's turn the levels and viewport both up to two. That looks a little bit better. Now I wanna make this look a little bit more random because you can see the edges are quite smooth. So what I'm gonna do is go up here to the mirror modifier. We'll click on the drop down and just apply the mirror. So if I go into edit mode, you can see now there's geometry on both sides. So I'll now just box select some of these edges here and I'm gonna kind of move them around. We can also press control R to add loop cuts. So we'll add some loop cuts here and here and maybe another loop cut there just to add it a bit more detail. 
And then I can just kind of move all of these around. So we're just gonna box select some of these vertices here. And we're just gonna move them around to make it a little bit more random, just to give it a bit more of a random shape there on the edge. Maybe add some loop cuts there and some loop cuts there. And then you can kind of bring some of them in, bring some of them out. So I'm just kind of moving the loops back and forth so it looks a little bit more random. And I'm gonna do that over here on this side. So let's add some loop cuts here. And then I can kind of move these vertices around just so that the edges don't look perfectly smooth. Bring this one over there. You can also add a few loop cuts right there. Adding a few loop cuts, kind of bringing this in a little bit, bringing this back a little bit. All right, so you can see now on the edges, it kind of looks just a bit more random and that looks a bit more organic and natural. Now what I also wanna do is give it a displacement modifier so that it looks even more random and has some surface bump. So let's click on add modifier and I can search for the displace modifier. Now the displace modifier you can see is making it look really big. So let's scroll down here and I can click on new to add a new texture. And here on the texture, I can call it seaweed. And then I can click on this button here and this will go over to the texturing panel. And instead of image or movie, again, we wanna choose clouds. And then we can just turn the size way down so that it has much more detail. And I'm gonna turn the size to a 0 .004. I think that's a pretty good size. And then you can't really see what it's doing right now. But if you click back here on the modifiers, you can go here to the displace modifier. And here on the strength, we wanna drag the strength way down, make it very small. So now you can actually see what it's doing. And I'll turn the strength to 0 .001. So 0 .001 on the strength, that's better. So it is kind of making it look more detailed. It's kind of adding some bump, but there's a problem and you can see that it's kind of going through itself. Now that's because we added the solidify modifier first, and then we added the displace modifier. So first we want to displace it, and then after it's displaced and all bumpy, we can add the solidify. So to change the modifier order, we can click here on these dots, and we can drag up and drop it here. So this way it'll just make it solid after it's displaced it. And also here on the subdivisions, let's turn the levels viewport and render up to like three, so that it's even more detailed. Maybe even turn that up to a four. I think a four is a bit better so it has even more surface detail. Now you can see there's a few spots here and there where it's kind of going through the mesh. And also, if I hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view, you can see because the rice has the displacement, you can see it's going through the mesh. So we just need to select the mesh and we can go into edit mode. And let's also click right here on this button to turn on the proportional editing. And we can now just select some of the vertices and we can hit G to grab. And we can just kind of pull some of the vertices up and just kind of move them around here so that they're not being covered by the other objects. So just bring this up here because I don't want the rice to be going through it. So bring this up, just make it a little bit bigger, just as big as you need. Also select this part here, bring that up. All right, let's see down here, you can see it's going through. So we'll bring that down on the Z axis, bring that part out there, just so that it's not going through the rice. All right, so that is good. So I'm just looking around the mesh, making sure that all looks good. So now we can just select the seaweed and we need to add a material. So let's go here to the material properties. We'll use the drop down, and we're just gonna choose the seaweed material. Let's press Control S to save. We can now hide the Tamago Sushi. So we're just gonna click on this check mark here just to hide it. So the next sushi that we're gonna be creating is the California roll. So so let's go to the add menu and we're going to add a circle and we want to scale the circle way down so I'll scale it down by a 0 0.03 so it's much smaller just a 0 0.03 let's zoom into the object and I can press Control a and I'll apply the scale now after looking at reference images it seems like the California rolls are a little bit more flat they're not quite as round so I'll press 7 for top view and I'll go into edit mode and make sure you still have the proportional editing on. And I'm gonna select some of the vertices here and just kind of move the vertices around on the edges and make it a little bit more of a square shape. It's still mostly gonna be circular, but you can see just by doing that, it looks a little bit more square. And that might be how it's kind of rolled out when they make the sushi. Maybe when it's rolled out, it becomes a little bit more flat on the edges. Now, before we continue, I do wanna put this object in its own collection. So in the outliner, I'm gonna right click, click on new collection, and then I can put this object inside the California roll collection. So let's select this object again. We'll go back into edit mode and I'm going to select the entire mesh and I'll hit E to extrude and we'll bring it up on the Z axis just like that. All right. And then it looks like I need to select everything and press shift N to recalculate the normals. So now let's go back to object mode and I want to add a modifier to give it some thickness. So let's go here to the modifier properties. 
we'll add modifier. We're going to add a solidify modifier and we can drag the solidify and we want to make it thick on the inside. So bring it in on the inside and all this part here, this is all going to be made out of rice. So I think having it about that thick is pretty good. We can adjust that later if we need to, but I think that's pretty good. So now that it's solid, I also want to add a subdivision surface. So I'll press control two to add a subdivision surface modifier. And I want to turn the viewport and render levels up to three so that it is nice and detailed. And we can use the object context menu and shade it smooth. So now you can see that it's like really smooth there on the top and the bottom. So I'll go into edit mode and I want to add some loop cuts here. I also want to add some loop cuts so that when we add the rice and the displacement and everything, it'll actually pop out of the mesh. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel way out until they are about a square and I can left click and right click and that kind of sharpens up the object as well. But then I also want to press control R and I want to click and drag it way up there, click there, and then control R to add another loop cut on the bottom. And we're going to drag this one right down there. All right, so that's looking good. So then what I also want to do is add some displacement to make it popping out of the mesh. So we'll go back to object mode. We're going to click on add modifier. And again, we're going to search for the displace modifier. Let's go down here and we'll click on new to add a new texture. And we're going to call this texture California roll. Let's click on this button here to go to the texturing properties. And under image or movie, we're going to choose clouds instead. And then I also want to change the scale again because it's way too big. So we'll make the scale much smaller. And I'm going to turn the scale to 0.01. All right, so now it's popping out of the mesh way too much. So if we go back to the modifiers, let's scroll down here. We can also minimize these modifiers here. And on the displacement, on the strength, we need to make this way smaller. So now we can actually see what it's doing. And I'll turn the strength to a 0 0.003. So now let's add the material. So I'll go over here to the shading and we'll just select the object here and we'll go to the drop down. And I'm gonna add the rice no displacement because if I added the rice with the displacement, it would pop out of the mesh and I'm gonna be wanting to add the sesame seeds all over the object. And so if I added the sesame seeds on the object, they wouldn't actually be on the surface because the displacement is popping it out. So instead of using the rice, I'm going to use the rice no displacement. And the object still looks like it's popping out because of that displacement. Now I do want to duplicate this material and just change a few of the settings. So right here on the rice no displacement, let's click on this button here to duplicate it. Let's call it rice California roll no displacement. So rice California roll no displacement. And there's just a few things that I want to change. So now here on the displacement on the scale, I'm going to turn this way down to a point 005, a point zero zero five, And then also let's go over here to the Voronoi texture. And I want to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to turn the Voronoi scale to like a 30 instead. All right, that looks a little bit better. And just to make the rice look a little bit more bumpy, I'm going to turn this first bump strength to a 0.4. All right, so let's go back over here to the layout again. And we can model the other pieces. So I'm now going to be adding the seaweed. So we'll select the object here and we're going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select one of these loops here. So just alt select that loop. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and then S to scale. And we're going to scale it down here inside the object. And this is going to be the seaweed. And also you might need to turn the proportional editing off if that got turned on. So scale that down. And then we need to make it its own object. So I'll hit P and we're going to separate by selection. Let's go back to object mode and I can now just select this object here. And this object is going to be the seaweed. So we'll go into edit mode and we'll select everything and we'll scale it up just a little bit. And if I press seven on the numpad to go to top view, I want to sharpen it out so it's a bit more sharp there on the edges. So it kind of goes along with the rice. So let's click here to turn on the proportional editing and I'm going to select a vertex and hit G to grab. And I'm just going to bring this around using the proportional editing to kind of shape it. So we'll just shape this down here, bring this up and kind of shape it just like that. All right, that's pretty good. I can select all the mesh. And let's hit the five on the numpad to go into the orthographic view so I can actually zoom into it. And I'll hit E to extrude and I'll bring it down on the Z axis. We're gonna bring it all the way down there just to about the end, just like that. All right, let's go back to object mode. Now you can see it is making it solid, but it's doing it in the wrong direction. So let's select the rice part and press H to hide it. Now we can select the seaweed again. And if we open up the solidify, we need to change this. 
So we'll turn the thickness way down and make it a very small number. And I'm gonna turn the thickness to a 0 0.001, so it's very thin. And then also we don't want this displacement. The displacement is messing it up. So if I go here to the displacement, we don't really need that. So I'll hit the X button just to delete that. And then I'll use the object context menu and shade that smooth. Now that is a tiny bit too thin, so I think I could now make it just a little bit less thin. So I'll turn it to a 0 0.002 there on the thickness. And then if I go into edit mode, I want to add some loop cuts there to sharpen up the edge. So I'll press Control R and I'll drag one loop cut right up there. And then also down here, I'll press Control R and I'll drag one more right down there just to kind of thicken that up. And now that I've thickened that up, I actually noticed that the solidify is a bit too thick because we added those loop cuts there. So I'm gonna turn the thickness way down again. So maybe just like a 0 0.001. Let's go back to object mode and I can press Alt H to unhide the other object. So now I'm gonna select the seaweed and I'll go into edit mode and I wanna select all the seaweed and I wanna bring it in a little bit. So I'm just gonna scale it but I don't wanna scale it on the Z axis. So I'll hit Shift Z, and then I can just scale the entire thing in just a little bit, something like that. All right, go back to object mode. Let's see, so you can see that the rice is going through some of the spots. So I'll just need to select some individual spots in edit mode, and I just need to shape it so that it kind of fits with the rice, but it doesn't go through in some areas. So just kind of bring this around, kind of bring that in there. Also this here, bring that out there. And right there, if the rice goes through, that is totally fine because we're going to be adding those different pieces like the vegetables and the piece of crab, which will be inside there. So you won't be able to see that. And then if we select this object here, let's go here to the materials. And instead of the rice material, we're going to click here and we're going to choose the seaweed material. So if I hold down the Z button and go into the rendered view, you can kind of see what that looks like. And I think maybe it could just be a little bit thinner because it is just a tiny bit too thick. So let's just make it like half the thickness. So we point zero 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 five. I think that is a little bit better. And I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to bring the whole thing down just a little bit. So it's kind of more sunken in there. Let's go into the rendered mode, see how that's looking. All right, that's pretty good. So we can now add those other pieces there inside the California roll. So we can actually duplicate the other objects that we've already made. So let's open up the outliner here and we're gonna open up the Mazuki Sushi. So open that up and you can see there's already some objects there. So what I need to do is just hide the Mazuki Sushi for now. And let's select both of these objects here, which are a part of the California roll and let's bring them over to the side. And now I can click here to turn on the Mizuki Sushi. And what we can do is hold down the shift key and select these four objects because we're going to put the same objects in the other sushi. So I'll press shift D to duplicate it, bring it right over here. And then we want to move these objects into the California roll collection. So I'll hit the M key and we're going to choose California roll. So I can now just hide the Mizuki Sushi and we can box select these objects here and bring them kind of back into the center. All right, so now I can press seven on the numpad for top view. And we can kind of shape these objects inside the seaweed there. So I'll select this object first and let's rotate it, kind of bring it over here and I'll go into edit mode and I can go into wireframe and I'm just gonna box select the very tip and I'll hit G to grab. And because we have the proportional editing on, it'll kind of bring it in and make it a bit smaller. Let's just kind of squish that down there. All right, select this piece. Let's go into edit mode. And this is gonna be the crab meat. So let's just box select some of the edges and kind of move them around, bring that back a bit. Select this piece here, go into edit mode. And this one, I think I'll rotate it and then scale it down a little bit. And we're just going to move it over here. Let's just stick it kind of right in there. Box select some of the pieces here. We're just going to like stick it right up there. All right, we'll do the same thing for the carrot piece. So we'll rotate the carrot over, stick it there in the corner. And if I go into edit mode and go into wireframe, I can just kind of move the shape of it. We could also maybe bring this part out a little bit, make it a little bit larger. All right, so I will go into the rendered view and let's take a look at that. And that is looking pretty good. Although I do need to select these objects and I need to bring them down a bit on the Z axis just to kind of put them inside the California roll. So these materials, I'm gonna keep the same, but this here, here, instead of it being salmon, I'm going to make a crab material. So let's just go into the shading workspace and I'll zoom into the object. Let's hit the X button just to delete that and I'll zoom in here. So now I can add a new material. So I'll click on new and I can just call this crab or you could also call it like crab meat. So I want to have the crab meat kind of be like a fleshy color, but then on the edges, I want it to be like a red color. So to do this, I'm going to add an ambient occlusion node. 
Let's drop the ambient occlusion here, and I can control shift and select it to preview it. And you can see the ambient occlusion is gonna be darker on the insides there. So to make it more contrasty, I'm gonna to go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for the color ramp. Let's add the color ramp node and we can stick the color ramp right here and I can drag the black tab over and you can see now there's lots of black areas on the edges. So I'll drag it to about here and then if I click on the black color, I'm going to make this lighter and I'm going to make it a bright red color. And if you want to use the same exact red color that I'm using for the crab meat, you can click on the color and go to the hex value and you can punch in B2. 371B. Now I want some of that crab color to be coming up here onto the white part. So to do this, I'm going to go to the search. We're going to search for the map range node, and we'll stick the map range node here in between the ambient occlusion and the color ramp. And then on this from max, I'm going to turn this to like a 1. 0.25. So just by turning it up a little bit to like a 1.25, you can see that's changing the colors. And so now instead of it being fully white, it just looks a little bit more red. So that looks a little bit better. So now this color of the color ramp can go into the base color and I can control shift and select the shader to preview it. Now I want to add a little bit of surface bump just like I've done for these other objects. So if I click here to select the avocado, I can hold down the shift key and I can select these four nodes. So the bump, the noise texture, the mapping, and the texture extra coordinate and just make sure you select all of them and I'll press control C to copy the nodes and then if I click on the crab meat I can press control V to paste the nodes. So now we have these same nodes here and the bump can just go into the normal so it gives it just a little bit of surface bump. And then I want to change just a few of the settings so on this roughness here I'm going to turn it to like a 0.55 instead that looks a little bit better. You could also change the size if you want to but I think that's pretty good. And then I also want to turn the roughness down a bit so the crab meat looks a little bit more shiny and wet. So I'll turn the roughness to like a 0.35 so it's a little bit more shiny. And to make it look a bit more fleshy, we can also open up the subsurface scattering here. And on this weight here, I'll turn it all the way up to 1. Now I want to turn down this top value here. So I'll turn this down to like a 0.5. So by turning it down, now you can see it looks a little bit more red and that looks just a little bit better. All right, and that is it for the crab meat material. So we can go back here to the layout and I'll press control S to save. So let's select all of these objects here and I wanna put them down on the bottom. So I'll press shift D to duplicate, bring it down on the Z axis. I can go into edit mode. I can select all the mesh. I can scale the mesh on the Z axis. I'll type negative one to invert it, hit enter. And then let's go back to object mode and I can bring the objects back up there. And if I go into the solid view, you can see we need to recalculate the normals. So if you go back into edit mode, you can press shift N to recalculate the normals. And then in object mode, just kind of move that up there. And it looks like the seaweed is a little bit too far down. So if I go back into edit mode, I'm gonna go into wireframe. I'm gonna click and drag just to box select the bottom part. And if I go back to solid view, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit in there. And then I can select the little pieces here and bring that up as well. So if I go into the rendered view, that looks a bit better now. All right, now mainly I'm gonna be rendering it from the top, but just in case you kind of duplicate it and rotate it down, I do want it to look pretty good on the bottom there. So the last thing that I wanna do is add the seeds on the California roll using the geometry nodes. So just select the rice piece, and we're gonna click over here to go to geometry nodes, and then we'll click on new to add new geometry nodes, but then we're actually gonna click right here to change the geometry nodes, and we're gonna choose the seeds on salmon, so choose that. So now what I want to do is duplicate the geometry nodes so that we can change the information. So let's click on this button here to duplicate it. And we're going to change this to seeds on California roll. So now we can change some of the things and make it look a little bit different. Now if I hold down the Z button and go back to solid view on this object, if I go here to the transform geometry and press the M key to mute the node, you can see it actually looks a little bit better without the translation because earlier in the tutorial series, we used this transform to kind of bring the seeds out so that they were over the surface, but we don't actually need this. So with the transform geometry selected, we'll just press control X to get rid of it. So that looks a little bit better because it's down on the surface. Now, what I want to do here is, again, control that density factor, and we're just going to weight paint where we want the seeds to be. So we'll select the object, let's click on object mode, and I can go to the weight paint, 
And then if you click here on the subtract, this is what we were using earlier, but let's choose draw. And now we can just click around here and we're just gonna add the color. So where it is blue, there won't be any seeds and where it is red, there'll be lots of seeds. Now to actually make this take effect, we need to go here to the geometry nodes and you can see there's this density factor, which we plugged in earlier. So instead of having one single value to control the density, we're gonna click on the input attribute toggle. Then we can click on the dropdown and we're gonna choose the top one which is the point to group flute, and this is gonna be that weight painting. So now we can just go around here and we can just kind of randomly paint a few areas here and there, and we're just gonna make it look like they rolled the California roll in the toasted sesame seeds. And if you wanna subtract any of it, you can click here and you can choose subtract to go to the subtract brush, and then you can get rid of any values that you don't like. All right, so let's click on the weight paint. We'll go back to object mode and I'll hold down the Z button and go into the rendered view just to see how that's looking. You could add a few on the top and the bottom. I think I will do that. So real quick, I'll go back to the weight paint and I'm just gonna weight paint just a few little spots right up here. I need to change my brush back to draw and then I can just paint a few areas right up here. Now you can see it's stretching over to the other side and that is because of the solidify modifier. So if you wanna change that, you can click on the solidify here, click on the drop down and choose apply. So now it's actually gonna be actual geometry. So now if you start to paint here, you can see it has a bit more geometry. Now, if you wanna have even more control over where you're weight painting, you'll need to go to edit mode and you'll need to add some loop cuts here. So just press control R to add a loop cut there. And now it has more geometry. So now if you go back into weight painting, you'll have more geometry to actually use. So you can actually weight paint that. So I'm just gonna add a few here and there, but I really don't wanna add too many. I don't wanna overdo it. Maybe just a few seeds here and there. So let's go to the weight paint, go back to object mode. I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view just to see how that's looking. All right, I will go back over here to the layout and I'll press control S to save. And this is gonna wrap it up for this part of the tutorial. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far. I hope you've been easily able to follow along and thank you so much for watching. So in the final part, we're gonna be doing all of the scene setup. We're gonna be modeling a plate and we'll be putting the sushi on the plate, doing some lighting and rendering and getting the final render. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files of this tutorial, you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and also the Blender Market. I'll have all the links in the description and that's a great way to help support this channel. You can also check out my Patreon page, and if you join a membership of my Patreon page, then you'll be helping to support the channel monthly, and you'll get access to lots of Blender content. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and also the link will be in the description. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the final part.